Hello, this is a schematic diagram of the unit uh, Bedini style pulse motor that we're going to look at today. I'm looking at, uh, we're going to start with, uh, we're running off a 5 volt supply. This is our 12 volt run battery and we're running off a 5 volt supply. The reason for that is because my coils, my series of coils here are, um, I've only got about five ohms across all four coils so that you know at five volts they'll give me one amp which I wanted to limit the ampage because of this, the, the, this, uh, because of the uh, size of the wire the wire was too thin if I ran a full more than four amps or through, through them it would act like a fuse and blow uh, we're going to run off five ohms I got the choke here because of the feedback of the uh, coil as the as the MOSFET shuts off the feedback will come back and, and put its put its uh, charge back into the cap with the choke I wanted here be to uh, filter this uh, power supply line so that it uh, the noise doesn't affect the timing of the circuit uh, we're picking up we're using a Hall effect sensor on Magnus to pick up uh, to uh, to um, pick up the magnet to, to energize the circuit, uh, we're running. We got a voltage divider set up here so that the you know it's 2.5 volts going into the op amp, and on this side when the we've got 5 volts on here, which keeps this op amp off. When the Hall effector turns, the Hall effect sensor turns on, brings that down to approximately a uh, half a volt, which turns on the op amp because the two and a half volts is higher than the half a volt so it turns on the op amp which turns on the MOSFET charges uh, sends five volts through the uh, bifiler transformer and then um, and then uh, when the magnet gets out of range of the Hall effect sensor it shuts off this the feedback comes back through this uh, protecting the thing, it feeds back through, charges, recharges the cap uh, for whatever power is left in the coils. And then on there, and also during that feedback, it also sends a pulse into the charge cap here, which in turn um, starts charging here. And then this is our my dump cap circuit. It uh, uses a 5 5 timer and another. Uh, op amp and, and a voltage divider here so that out of the 5 5 we get a 5 volt supply coming into the 5 5 5 timer and then uh, it puts 3.3 uh, volts out of pin 5 so we want 3.3 volts here so we need a voltage divider uh, using resistors we need a uh, voltage divider so when this hits 30 volts it's 3.3 volts here and that turns off the uh, turns off the MOS, I mean the op amp, which then uh, the 555 timer triggers because this isn't a uh, one shot configuration with just pin 2 and then uh, this timing through the RC uh, time here will turn on this MOSFET causing the, bat the cap to discharge through the battery and this battery is a charge battery and uh, turns on the MOSFET for a certain amount of time. Hopefully, we'll set the time so that you know about 14 volts. It'll shut back off, and then uh, it allow the charge to start building back up on the on the on the cam. I am not totally happy with this circuit, but it's it was better than my previous circuit. Uh, um, so I'm going to show you a couple of features here about with the. Uh, with the uh, motor I have going. And one of the features I put on here is uh, it's uh, as we spin this you can see on the left side there that it's just one continuous wire and I did that so that you could see that it was working uh, the way you expect to, you can see it on the film, and then on the right side is the on, you know, the black on, and then the 
white, black and white, so that you can actually see it. It shows much better on a film than it does on the on the um, situate, you know, on the film. Yeah, than it does in actual real life because to me it just looks like blurred lines when you know, when the film's not running. But you'll see it on the camera. Uh, put that on there for you guys. And then I uh, wanted to show to you that uh, this unit is uh, is a uh, uh, magnetic bearing that's just floating. And then we'll come back to here. And, the and then on my breadboard here I've got the circuit set up so that we can uh, you know, as circuit as it is on the diagram, on the schematic. There's my charge battery, and then my uh, no, this is my run battery, and this is my charge battery, and uh, this is uh, the meters I'm going to be showing you here in just a moment. Let me get this started up for you. Uh, one of the things I wanted to show you starting up was my current draw on the unit. I'll be just right back. I uh, got this thing set up for showing you the current draw on the battery on the run battery um, I don't know why it's sitting at 0 .03 the wires not even hooked up uh, just the no noise from the air I suppose uh, just wanted to show you that uh, I've got this set rigged set up ready to run uh, one of the first things I wanted to show you was when we uh, well, this is sitting idle, and there's just power hooked up. I wanted to show you what my current draw was. Now, right now it's charging, charging this cap. As this cap gets charged, yeah, the current draw will drop down, and then it gets down to about 10 milliamps, and then that's the idle of uh, just the current running through the circuitry, which is pretty low, but it could be lower using... Um, more efficient caps like uh, the CMOS version of the 555 timer and, and the CMOS version of the op amps. I don't have, I just have, just have the standard op amps on here. Um, got this down. It's about 10 milliamps, so here's 11. I'm about to let this go, and you can see what happens as this bleed up, and then we'll we'll see what kind of current you know we'll get that get set to. starts off pretty high because of uh, the, the hall sensor keeps the coils turned on longer which burns up excess electricity and and it draws more current because the coils are on long a uh, longer period of time uh, this will settle down here in just a minute as soon as it hits top speed uh, I've ran this with just an air core on the coils and it's not quite as, you know, not even half as fast as what it is with the core. And then I also wrap the uh, cores around the coil so that it's both attracting and repelling at the same time, which added about 10% more speed than just having it just repel. Um, seems to be settling down here now. We're getting close to 80, no, about right in there about 98 milliamps I've had it down as low as 60 I'm not sh quite sure why it's running so high at this time uh, but I'll just I'm gonna that's what I wanted to show you is about as far as current draw now I need to reset up so that I can show you voltages and frequency so we can I can show you how fast this thing is running I'll be right back here to show you what's going on with the machine now I've got it set up for this meter set up so that we can measure the Hertz as it as the, it's running right now right now it's just reading uh, frequency off the air it's that sensitive of a, of, of a meter um, and once I hook up power this will drop back to zero and then this is my meters hooked up across my charge cap I'm showing you charge and discharge down through your the line the analog line here the 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 digital display is, doesn't keep up fast enough because it's set for about one hertz, and you'll see it charge and discharge quite for, quite fast. I'll show you later on the on this meter 
uh, peak and uh, minimum voltages, minimum and maximum voltages across my charge cap, uh, whereas this one uh, is just the basic meter and this one is uh, much better. Uh, I'm going to hook this up right now and we'll put this at idle so we can show it goes to zero. Yeah, so we're, we're going to start it up and see where we end up. Now, just wanted to let you know that there are eight magnets on that disc and uh, each, di each magnet is exactly 45 degrees. I had to figure out how to drill the holes in the right spots and ended up using a jig I made to do that. Um, so each magnet is exactly 45 degrees so that when it comes around uh, the uh, Hall effect sensor knows exactly when to trigger when the magnets in the center of the coils um, so that the next magnet comes through it triggers the next you know triggers that magnet so uh, top out around 240 Hertz 41 I'm going a little faster right now I've had it up to 250 Still floating up there, but using math, you know, since it's uh, eight eight magnets, we have to divide the hertz by eight. Two hundred two hundred and forty-two. Uh, we'll just say two hundred forty-three. Two hundred forty-three divided by eight, and then we times that by sixty sixty seconds uh, to give us uh, RPM, and our RPM is eight. A little over 1800 RPM that disc is spinning. So you can see, uh, if you can see it on the screen there, 1822 or so. So we're, we're spinning quite fast. And uh, I'm going to switch over to pull this off now and switch to uh, voltages. And I can show you what what's happening on the charge cap. As you can see, it's charging and discharging. I'm going to switch this to here. I'm going to put my. This is what's happening. In my, I'm going to hit the minimum and maximum. My maximum voltage, which is controlled by the op amp, is uh, with the resistor divide and all that. You can't get precision resistors that didn't get exactly what you needed, but. I did find two that were pretty close, and I'm, you know, at at, at about uh, 31.3 volts, which is independent of anything else in the circuit, it, it will trip the uh, 555 timer. And then uh, if we hit the minimum, it uh, the timer's on long enough to discharge the the resistor, I mean, discharge the charge cap to. Uh, 14.6 and I can adjust that down just a little bit using this uh, trim resistor the timing on it yeah, increase that we can drop that down I want to drop it down to about 14 volts Yeah, there we go. We're right in, the, right in the ballpark right now. So that we're sitting out, uh, you know, sit there and it'll charge and discharge. I really don't like the five volt system because it's a really small cap. Um, you know, uh, voltage isn't everything. It's more about the current, and the five volt system doesn't uh, just doesn't cut it. Uh, I'm running right now. I took some measurements across that cap there, and I'm running about yeah, as it discharges. I'm only pushing, oh, I think it was with 20 milliamps back into the battery. But I'm using 90 to currently. I'm using 90 to run the whole system, so it's very, very inefficient. Um, you know, it does. You know, I can speed up the cap. Uh, speed up the speed the frequency by I'm going to double 
double the number of magnets I have on the disc and then uh, that'll speed it up tremendously because it's a it's pushing faster and there's it pushes twice as much so it should increase it more you know about three times as fast as that 1800 rpm so I'd like to see if it would work and it's probably I've got the magnets to do it so it's just a matter of run, run, rig, rigging up another jig to drill the holes um, otherwise it's uh, this is what I've got for you thank you